I'd like to give you a quick introduction to rate, rate orders and rate equations. Uh, what we're looking at here is a reaction and in this reaction we've got a, a rate equation. Now the rate equation is describing what happens to the rate when we change these different concentrations of the reactants. Now as you can see we've got, uh, we've got a K here, that's the rate constant. That's a constant value at a constant temperature and all of these reactions are done at constant temperature. Then you've got the concentration of a reactant here, and you've got the concentration of another reactant here. Now, the powers of these represent the orders, and the orders tell you how much the rate will change when we change the concentrations of these reactants. So I'm going to give you an example of that in a minute. So what do we mean by rate? Well, rate is like speed. You know that speed is distance over time, or the change in distance over the change in time. The more distance you cover in the shorter time, the faster your speed. The same thing with rate of reactions. We've got change in the concentration of reactants over change in time. The faster these reactants are changing into products, the faster the rate will be. So we've got our, got our equation, we've got our rate equation here. And the orders here, it's a common misconception that the orders match the coefficients in the reaction. As you can see, that's clearly not the case here. The coefficient of the HgCl2 is 2, but the reaction order here is 1. And here the reaction order is 2, but the coefficient is 1. So they don't have to match. Usually, uh, it's, it often happens that they do, but it doesn't have to be that way. So let's uh, give you an example of a application of this. So let's say we've got one molar solutions of uh, HgCl2 and C2O42 minus. Those are the two reactants, if you'll remember. So we've got one molar concentrations of each of those. Now if we plug those concentrations into the rate equation, which is up here, it's going to be K 1 to the 1 times 1 squared. We're just uh, substituting in the 1 for each of these. And we come up with a rate that equals, uh, that equals K. So uh, that would, that's what it would be for, for one molar and one molar. Now let's look at the effect of increasing the concentration of HgCl2 to two molar. So we plug the two molar in and our rate comes out to, to 2K. <clears throat> so you can see that by doubling the HgCl2 concentration, we have the same effect of doubling the rate. We start out with K, now it's 2K. Now that's pretty common when you've got a first order situation here on your, uh, on your reactant. Now let's look what happens if we leave the HgCl2 the same and just double the C2O42 minus. Now we're doubling that to 2 molar, so now it's K 1 to the 1 times 2 squared. So now that comes out to 4K. So you can see that doubling the C2O42 minus has the effect of quadrupling the rate. That is now we've got 4 times what we originally had. And that's for doubling this one. That's because of the squared here, obviously. So you can see that the higher the reaction order, the greater the increase in rate that you'll get if you vary that particular reactant. So what we can see is that uh, changing the C2O42- or upping that one will have a much larger effect on the rate than changing the first one will. And that means uh, that has the application that if we want to do this reaction, we know that we could increase the rate more by increasing this amount rather than this amount. And that's the thing, chemists are always after ways to increase reaction rates. Alright, after this I'll show you an example uh, or an application of this kind of problem.